Hello to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua Messiah, who said in his word in John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hi, I'm Dr. John Curry, an ambassador, and welcome to the kingdom of heaven on earth. If you want to follow this podcast, please subscribe to JC Global Embassy TV One. Ring the bell and hit the thumbs up button. Today's subject for today is the science of eugenies and human zoos. The science of eugenies and human zoos. If you notice on my shirt that that's here, you'll see a word that's called Alcabalan. That's the original name for Africa. In other words, before the Africana got over there and renamed it to Africa, it was called Alcabalan. The name Alcabalan simply means the land of the blacks. And to my left and your right over here, this is a gentleman that we're going to talk about a little bit today. His name is Ote Banga. Ote Banga. He was a Congolese from the Congo, and he was a pigment, and he was roughly about four foot eleven, maybe a little bit shorter. And he was placed in human zoos. And that human zoo that he was placed in was at the New York Bronx Zoo as well as uh, during the World Fair in 1904, uh, he was there being exhibited in the monkey house with monkeys, as well as while in New York, in the New York Bronx Zoo. So we're gonna talk about the science of eugenics and human zoos. You see, those who cannot remember nor choose to remember nor want to remember the past are destined to repeat it. That's by myself, Dr. John Curry. So human zoos with Ote Banga in the science of eugenics. It was James Watson, a geneticist, along with Maurice Wilson, co-winner uh, of the Nobel Peace Prize for claiming to discover a structured DNA. They're claiming to discover a structured DNA. And what was that DNA about? That DNA was about trying to find the strongest DNA. And while trying to find it, they said that blacks are inferior to whites. That blacks are inferior to whites. This is an outright bodacious lie because blacks are not inferior to any group on the planet, most certainly not whites. How that the dominant gene can be inferior to a recessive gene, I don't know. Blacks have the dominant genes, white have the recessive gene, and uh, the recessive gene cannot withstand the dominant gene because everything that a black man touches become black. Whatever a white man touches become the opposite of himself. If he have a child by an Asian woman, the child is gonna be looked upon as Asian. If you have a child by a Hispanic woman, the child is going to be looked upon as Hispanic. If you have a child by any other group other than himself, his recessive gene cannot fight off the dominant gene of black, and particularly and especially, and brown. So who he lay with is super important for his genes to continue on. For him to continually to be, and when I say him, I mean the, the whites or the Caucasoid when we deal with species, for the Caucasoid to continually to claim dominance, he must have the dominant gene. And the Caucasoid, the white man, do not have the dominant gene because everything he touches and a child is involved, the child will be the opposite of what he is. Whites can only reproduce themselves as when they're having babies by other whites. When a black man has a baby, by any group, everybody already know that child is black. So the so-called dominant gene of whites is nothing but a big lie. It always have been a lie and it will continue to be a lie. In the science of eugenics is the self-direction of human evolution. You know, Charles Darwin called himself trying to reverse the, the plan so he came up with this scheme of eugenics and many other things as far as dealing with the evolution of man. 
Nazi sterilization plan is extended to 10,000 German classes. And uh, they was using it in order to create a so-called uh, superior race. Now, I don't know if you remember back in the day when Adolf Hitler had went to the Olympic Games and Jesse Owen was there and a lot of the American people was there, but it was really for uh, Adolf Hitler to see if he could produce the master race. So it was said that when Jesse Owen was in the blocks running the 100 meters, 200 meters and all the relays, that Hitler was basically losing his mind because he could not believe that his great so, uh, supposedly superior race was winning, was losing all of those events to a black man. So when a reporter came up to Hitler and asked him, Adolf Hitler, what do you think of your master race now? Adolf Hitler basically just kind of leaned forward and said, it is not fair. He said, it is not fair. And the reporter said, well, what do you mean it's not fair? He won it right out. He won it fair and square. He said, no, it is not fair. And the reporter said, why? He said, it is not fair for humans to run with animals. That was Adolf Hitler's response. You see, the biological argument for racism may have been uh, common before the 1859, but they increased by orders of a magnitude following the acceptance of evolution theory by Stevens J. Cloud, Harvard University. So they began to believe in evolution, that man gradually came along and man gradually began to be what he needed to be. And as a result of that, uh, evolution was kind of moving forward. It was kind of taking over because man did not want to see another man, and particularly the white man, did not want to see a black man ahead of him. You remember I told you a while back in, in a few of the podcasts that you know, the white man and white people are the last branch on the tree. It's amazing how they can be the last branch on the tree in history, but yet try to whitewash and also try to rewrite the root of the tree, which simply means they already know that they're the last branch on the tree. They already know that everybody else was before them. So now they're trying to do a rewrite and a whitewashing of history. Therefore, they're trying to say the dominant gene is the recessive gene when everybody knows that the dominant gene is the dominant gene because the recessive gene cannot reproduce itself. It was in 2007, Jane Watson said, there is no firm reason to anticipate the intelligent capacity of a people geographically separate in their evolution should prove to have evolved. Now, basically, that's just simply saying that uh, we're, we as white people, we think that we're the ones that are supposed to be leading the parade, that are supposed to be dominating the world through evolution because we have decided in our own studies that we are better than everybody else. You see, that was an international congress of eugenics conference. They had one, uh, basically, they ended up with three in the Supreme Court ruling that lied, excuse me, that led to 70,000 forced sterilizations. You see, what white supremacy want to do is kill off a lot of people so they can be supreme for real. But as long as there are a lot of people around, they can never have that supremacy. That's why they want to always kill black and brown people. They want to get rid of us because we're the ones that's holding up their supremacy. But the Supreme Court ruled over 70,000 forced sterilization. In other words, this is to, present, to prevent people from having children. That was done in 1927. The Supreme Court also decided by a vote of eight to one to uphold the state right to forcibly sterilize a person considered to be unfit to procreate. Isn't that amazing? want to sterilize people that they think is unfit to procreate. In other words, we're going to treat you like an animal and uh, we're going to sterilize you because we don't think you're fit to uh, procreate. It's, it's, it's important for us to, to also understand that during that time or around that time, I believe it was in the 1705 where the United States wrote in the Constitution Article 1, Section 2, claiming black people as three-fifths human. 
And in the mere fact of claiming us a three-fifth human, that opened the door to human zoos and to treat us like animals and tattoo us and put marks on us. I, I want to show you Ote Banga. It's a black pigment. Now, when you see Ote Banga, you see how they uh, kind of grind his teeth up to make him look like an animal. And they did all of that so that when they put him in those human zoos, that he would be representing an animal. And, and basically, they put him in the monkey house. And in the monkey house, they did that so that uh, when other monkeys was hanging around him, that everybody thought that uh, he, was a, he was a monkey. But I know and you know this listening to this, that when they brought us from Africa, they already knew we were not animals. We were very intelligent people but they put many of us in human zoos. It was taking us all over the country, showing us as, as being uh, basically animals and showcasing us. And basically, that's what they are trying to do even today. But thanks be to God that God always has somebody that's going to come to our behalf. And it was a man by the name of Reverend James Garden led a protest and against the exhibition of Ote Banga. And when he led that protest, uh, they eventually stopped exhibiting him around. And when they did that, it said that later on, uh, Ote Banger went off after being humiliated and, and treated like an animal. He went off and killed himself. That's what human zoos and science and scientific racism can do. Now, another thing that I want you to understand, here's the breakdown of social Darwinism. Social Darwinism, along with Herbert Spencer, said there were four main races on the planet, each with distinct characteristics. Let me say that again. Uh, social Darwinism, Darwinism, along with Herbert Spencer, these are all eugenics, and these are people that believe that white supremacy is the law of the land, classified mankind into four distinct uh, species. And in doing that, he lists the characteristics. Now, look at what he said for the first one. The first one are black people. He said, black African, naturally lazy and unintelligent. Now, I find that to be amazing when we built world civilization. We built the pyramid and they still haven't figured that out. If we're so unintelligent, why haven't you figured out how to make pyramids? Why haven't China, when they tried to go over to create pyramids, they didn't do it. Everybody tried to create the pyramid, but they couldn't figure it out. How can you say that blacks are unintelligent when we gave you mathematics, when we gave you civilization? We gave the whole globe civilization. There would be no civilization if it were not for black, not were not for black people that gave you civilization. We gave you math. We gave you the script. We gave you all of these things, but yet and this is just like what a social Darwinist person may do, a eugenist may do, a Ku Klux Klan person may do. They like to trick themselves as thinking that they're better than everybody else. So they got us as blacks on the top, simply saying the African are naturally lazy. Then they said, uh, the second one, uh, the brown. It said the Indian Hispanics are arrogant and dull. Then they said the yellow, which is the Asian, smart but sneaky. Isn't that amazing? And here's what they got for themselves, for whites. The Euro, morally superior, morally superior and intelligent. Morally superior. Well, we can just look at our president, Donald J. Trump, and know that that's a lie coming straight out the gate. And if we go all the way back to Abraham Lincoln, who everybody think was a saint, he did not free slaves. What he did was to preserve the union. After the war was over, then he trying to sign something. The point I'm trying to get across to you is that the very people that are trying to claim white supremacy are not supreme. And the reason why they're not supreme is because they spend all of their time trying to make everybody else look bad. So when we get to race and science and the science of eugenics, we have to understand that the science of eugenics and human zoos are real. There's still some human zoos now when you, if, you know, uh, prisons are designed to be human zoos. Jails are designed to be human zoos. That's all slavery 2.0. They're all designed to attack the black mind so we can keep thinking of ourselves as animals in zoos. So he continued on. He said, whites, the Euro, morally superior and intelligent, survival of the fittest, 
Europeans win because nature has selected them to rule. No, nature hasn't selected you to rule. What selected you to rule is germs and guns. Without the guns, you nothing. You just like everybody else. Take away the bullets, take away the guns, take away the bombs. You'll go snivel over in a corner because you're terrified of what you think you're better than. So I just want you to know as black people, uh, the science of eugenics believe in the purity of a racial stock. The science of eugenics believe that white people are superior than any other group. The science of eugenics simply says that when Hitler went to slaughter all of the Jews, he thought he was doing his race a favor. Remember Hitler at the Olympic Games with Jesse Owen. He thought he was producing the master race. And to a young man by the name of Jesse Owen came and won, I believe, four gold medals contending with the so-called master race. There is no master race. There have been ever, not ever, any white supremacy or superiority. It is all a social construct made up so white people can think they're better than everybody else. And they are not. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And come and visit us next time. Remember to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to JC Global Embassy TV One. We look forward to talking to you next time. God bless. Until next time.